Hello and welcome to another Open Frameworks audio programming tutorial. Today we are going to add a, uh, a biquad filter to our audio tools file. As I said at the beginning of the series, uh, a big strength of programming audio in C++ is the breadth of work that's already been done and is available to you open source. If you don't have anything, odds are if it's popular enough or if it's a common enough item, it, you can find it online as is the case today. If you head over to earlevel.com, this more specific link will be in the description, we can find both uh, the header and CPP file for a biquad filter. And you will also find a few documents explaining how a biquad filter works. But if you're not interested in how it works, you can still take the code and the license is totally okay with that. So this is fair game, we can use this. So copy the header on this page. Keep the license and the, all the other comments. Um, that way, when you go through your file later, you'll know who's that belongs to, who that belongs to, and the license agreement. And add that header to the end of our audio tools header. Okay, should be happy. And go ahead and get rid of if not defined by quad H. We don't need that. Okay. Great, and go back to the website. Scroll down and grab the Biquad CPP file. All right, so we'll have to do just a couple of things with this. All right, one, one problem is it doesn't know what M underscore pi means. So quickly, let's first go here. I think I forgot to, or the audio tools header. I think I forgot something else as well. Not here. Ah, here we are. So at the top of the biquad CPP file, we don't need to include biquad.h since uh, we're actually kind of merging these documents here. And it's including the math.h library, but we won't need that either. Um, Actually, we will, but we already have the math.h library. It's included with the Open frame, Frameworks main library. So we're actually using that library, or getting access to that library from this inclusion. Okay, so everything looks happy, except for the tan of m underscore pi. So we're going to use Open Frameworks constants, so that'll just be pi. And that looks happy. Okay. And the filter looks very confusing. However, it is not confusing to use. So let's go over back to the header where we added the by quad information. I'm going to go ahead and do my usual divider here. All right. So let's take a look around. Uh, we have an enumerator, which was covered in the last episode. And this enumerator will tell us um, which type of biquad filter we're going to use. Low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, peak, low shelf, and high shelf. Um, and when we make a biquad in this, we are going to tell it what type to use with these enumerators. You could use an integer, but it'll make more sense to use these. All right. So we have our default constructor, our constructor with variables included, or deconstructor. Let's see, what else? Process, set frequency. All right, so this, this is not all in all too complicated in the header at the very least. And uh, we all, he's also inlined the, um, the actual process function. So he's made this a little more efficient. And then here are the, here's the math that makes these biquad filters work. Um, this video will not be about how biquad filters work, but they're, well, mainly because he's got several articles explaining that, so that would be a little redundant. But I will show how to use this within an open frameworks context. All right, so now that we've included that, we can make a new biquad. Biquad should turn green if it's happy, and we'll call it filter. 
and we'll make it a pointer to a bike quad. All right, so we, first we need to set that up. Go to the top and you set up function before the audio stream starts. Filter, sorry, filter equals new by quad. Here we can put the initial variables. So the by quad type, you can see the type, frequency, Q, and peak gain. So let's go ahead and go back. Let's get this list. I'm going to copy and paste it there. So we have a reference. Comment that out. All right, so these are the types available to us. I'm going to use a band pass. So BQ underscore type band pass. And that was just a convenient way to make this filter where you can change the type or decide the type by using words rather than a, um, a less clear integer. Okay, so now we need frequency. We'll do 400 to start. The Q will make two and we'll go negative three decibels for the peak gain. All right, something important to note, the frequency has to be frequency divided by the sample rate. If you don't have this in your document yet, go ahead and make a sample rate store that in your header. I don't think we had that when we left off last time. So make sure you have a sample rate and the frequency will be frequency divided by sample rate when you set that. All right. Why is that highlighted? I'm not sure. I don't like it though. That's a new one for me. Okay. I'm sure it's fine. All right. And we have all the information to play a sound file with the varying types of interpolation still. So after, after all of that information, our current sample will already have, will, will already be storing the sample of audio from the sound file. So to add the biquad, we simply need to current sample equals filter, which is what we named our biquad, pointer to the process. Then this is the input. So we're going to process the current sample. All right, this is making me real nervous. Ah, okay. <laughs> Apparently I was searching for that. Okay, I don't know when that happened. But now our current uh, sample is being processed. And I've, I've gotten rid of the information we had here, but let's go ahead and set the frequency to the mouse X position. So filter process, or sorry, there's a function to set the frequency, so set frequency and double frequency. So we'll map X to the screen width. And let's go from 40 hertz to 2000 hertz. All right, and then temp freak divided by sample rate. All right, I should be happy. Okay. So let's go ahead and make sure everything's fine. I'm going to load um, a longer sound file with some piano in it this time. All right, so with how much work at all, we have uh, used a band or implemented a band pass filter. All right, so that was that was a little too easy. So let's let's do a bit more than that. First, let's get a hold of the Q. 
So go back to your mouse move function, float temp q equals of map y zero get height and we'll map it uh, let's see from let's do eight to zero point twenty five. Eight's a pretty high Q. Set Q and we'll make this so temp Q. So you can hear the bandwidth change with the cue. All right, so let's combine a couple of things that we have done before. Let's grab an oscillator from the very first, or the second, the very second tutorial oscillator and we'll call this frequency control all right so we're going to make an LFO to change the filter frequency so grab frequency control head to our setup function to set up our frequency control oscillator and we'll need a frequency let's start with one phase, amplitude, and sample rate. All right. <clears throat> now we need to change, instead of changing the, where is this? Instead of changing the frequency here, we're going to change the frequency in our audio loop. So before we use the filter, Let's set the frequency. No, not yet. Get sample. This will process our oscillator. And this returns negative one to one. So let's make a temporary value. And we'll map the output of that oscillator, which is negative one to one. to whatever frequency range we like. So let's go 60 hertz to, let's do 480 hertz. All right, and then after we have that calculated, let's set the frequency of our filter to that value. So filter, set frequency, temp freak. All right. So now we should have an auto wall. We don't, okay. Let's find out why. Ah, we did not divide by our sample rate. This is a good moment to mention when you're messing around with frequencies, especially in C++, or not frequency, sorry, when you're messing around with filters, um, don't start with headphones on your ears. <laughs> and always try to start with your, your volume turned down 
I actually have a colleague who ruined her ears um, by letting things get out of hand on, on accident. Accidents are easy. We just made one here. So just be careful. Filters are especially prone to blowing up in your face. Fortunately, this error did not do that to us. All right. So we still have access to the Q or the quality factor. Okay, cool. All right, so moving right along. Now we can use the mouse X position to not change the frequency of the filter, but to change the, uh, the frequency of the oscillator affecting the filter. So let's do that. Let's see, map the X position. And let's make this go once every four seconds to, let's go up to the audible range just for fun, um, 60. So. After passing 20, it's not really an F LFO by definition any longer. All right, so we need to set the frequency of our control oscillator. And we've built a function for that, dot set frequency temp freak. All right. And I didn't like the range we had selected. So let's go ahead and just go an octave above 480, which would be 960. Uh, let's, uh, let's go even higher. See, what's an octave above 960? That'll be 1820 plus 100, 1920. Hope that math is right because this, that'll be embarrassing if not. All right, cool. So we're getting some of those nice spacey sounds, so out of space kind of thing going on, which is kind of fun. So let's think about something else to change. Let's uh, let's change the amplitude based amplitude of the control oscillator based on the Y instead of Q. So Q will be set to let's change that two is pretty good let's do four all right and then we'll use temp we'll call this temp amp and we'll set the amplitude of our control oscillator and what this will do is uh, change the range of of the wall or of the um, of the filter. So instead of going from what we had before, which was hard to find. All right, 60 to 1920, it'll scale down. So when this is negative one to one, it'll be 60 to 1920, that'll be the maximum range. All right, so let's test that out.
Yep, that's an example of a time to, you, you probably saw this uh, while I was typing, but that was an example of a time not to start with headphones on your ears. Why would I map amplitude to eight and 0 0.25? Foolish mistake. All right, so from, <laughs> all right, so one to zero. And just for the record, I did have my headphones over my ears, like I just told you not to. So, sometimes you learn, sometimes you don't. All right, cool. So let your imagination run wild. It would be nice to have a, an oscillator that did more than a sine wave. And I will cover that probably 10 tutorials from now, but you could always grab oscillators from somebody else as well up until that point. And uh, I'm just going to go back to this website because it's instantly made my list of favorite favorite websites. It's, it explains everything very clearly. It keeps the code very clear and it's pretty extensive. There's a lot on here and this is not the last time we will reference this site but I do recommend going to earlevel.com and checking that out. On the next tutorial we'll be covering audio input.